Haikyuu episode 16. The first match of the tournament continues. And they're just crushing it so far. Damn. Well, one, they don't even really need it right now. They're just dominating. But two, now it's gotten better. That's for damn sure. They have that whole camp. Yeah, and their teamwork rating is off the charts. A lot more heart. Honestly, I was expecting a, a closer match, but it's satisfying to see them just blow through these guys. Fake. Using all their weapons. Though there's still time for them to turn it around, the other team. He woke up from his biscuit nap. I see that look of fear in his eyes. Fear and awe. I'm just trying to read clues in into this based on the opening, which I probably shouldn't do. But I feel like the second half of the season is not going to finish the tournament arc. It might only be a couple teams, but we'll see. Episode 16, Winners and Losers. Oh no! And now we get a sympathetic treatment for them so we can feel bad when they get destroyed, but not that bad. Oh, this is Daichi. Right, but he's a friend on the other team. Winners and losers. Can't all win. Man, they've been in this game a long time. And this is probably the end of one of their careers today. Not Daichi. And that explains a lot about where we are now. Damn! Well, if he's got to lose, at least he goes out with some character growth. And like a boss. <laughs> I feel like this is going to be a repeated theme, repeated motif in this tournament and beyond. There's something about this connected to your honor, too. Like, if you're doing it... Why is this so relatable? I, mean, I shouldn't be surprised at this point. It was just a short, simple line, but the fact that they're kind of relieved that they lost makes a lot of intuitive sense to me. There are just degrees to it. You know, I've talked a lot already in multiple shows about the fact that if you want to get to the highest level, like the number one, you have to be kind of a demon. Hype, sports, anime aside, that's probably what a lot of players feel, at least on some level, you know? The good news, I think, is that people play multiple roles in life and you don't have to be as passionate about everything as our team is about volleyball. But at the same time, I think there's something really beautiful and heroic, I would say, and honorable about having the full commitment and passion and dedication to whatever one is doing at that time, you know? Like, you only have so many opportunities in life. You only have so many moments. As Daichi was probably referring to there, the outcome of the game isn't really what's important. It's you're creating a legacy of yourself for yourself. And to leave the court with no regrets, I think, is something that will be character building and feel great no matter what the outcome. Like even with the Kurosano team, a lot of the things that they feel not great about or are hung up about are ways they didn't meet their own expectations or desires for themselves. It wasn't necessarily about the loss. It's hard to tap into that in all things, but these kind of moments are a reminder of that for me. But he's trying to do a whole character development arc in 10 minutes. They're feeling it. Coach's strategy is paying off. It's a bloodbath. He's just doing it all by himself. I'll let him score a point. Let him have one. Oh no. Oh, I got a penalty. There you go. Don't go down without a fight. There you go. Drop the hammer, guy whose name I can't remember. Savor this moment. The moment that is likely the end of your volleyball career. Damn, they also are struggling to believe, but they too are giving it their all. This is so interesting. It's just a full-on episode about Daichi through the perspective of others. This is Daichi's inspiration in both of them. Oh, damn. 
She slapped that girl a lot less hard than she slapped herself. Is that a metaphor? <laughs> I mean, much more crazy comebacks have happened. There was a great example in the NFL recently. That's it. How does that feel? How good does that feel? How many games will they play in the same day? Yeah, especially for Hinata, damn. Ah, uh, Kuro has got this. There's just too much character development potential for Asahi. This episode is called Winners and Losers. And on the one hand, it's it's kind of brutal. You know, it's brutal because you like them. They're all likable. Daichi's middle school friend just having a short amount of showtime is likable. You want him to win. But that's kind of the, the beautiful cruelty of sports or anything meritocratic in that sense is that you can't all win. And like I said before, I think that's a domain of life that's really important to focus on. But I think the good news, well, two things. One is that it really won't matter what the outcome of the game is long term. It'll matter who he is, right? Because it's his life. And the values that were expressed in this episode for him are values that will make his life more likely to be successful in his own eyes. And when you think really big picture, you don't need to win every game you just need to win a game i mean really that's all it takes you don't need to win every pursuit you really probably only need to win one pursuit you know one real victory or repeated victories in one key area is probably enough i would guess it probably should be something repeated you know something you're currently doing rather than a one-off thing because then time passes and it kind of fades but let's say to be dominant or match your own expectations and feel competent and feel good in one area has a way i think of just filling that that emotional slot so everything has a way of just being feedback into that like i think there's room for both at the same time everything at a given moment can be of critical importance in the sense that it's important to give it one's all because that's important for your self definition and character but at the same time really it's the big picture that matters more who you are and what do you think of yourself are you meeting or exceeding your own expectations to a point where you feel fulfilled <laughs> so they lost <laughs> slappy slappy <laughs> yeah it definitely stings it'll sting <laughs> but i really believe at the same time long term this will be a good memory for her because she left it all on the court oh, this is the death of a long-held dream it does really hurt to lose in the first game. This is such a great, honest look at this. Wow. Yeah, they're carrying the hopes and dreams of the people they defeat as well. The ultimate respect, the Daiichi handshake, and acknowledgement. Yeah, it's half the teams, right? Or a little bit less than that. <laughs> this is very self-aware. Because there aren't really many extras in the show. Everyone has a voice. And also, Kurosano could lose. It's very, very possible. In fact, it feels likely to me. And also, not everyone who loses lost because they didn't do their best. It's just there's a certain element of it that is just circumstance, just like life. And I know this. I know how this feels long term. When I think back to things I lost with regret, it's all it's all about the things, the ways in which I knew I let myself down. It's rarely about the outcome. He's gonna become a legend. <laughs> Hopefully, it doesn't go to his head. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, 
Right, the more he opens it up to decoys. This seems like it'll be their first really huge challenge. Right, there's a lot in it for him. Does he have the mental fortitude? Because they're definitely going to block some spikes in this game too. And he's developed that groove, that groove that he expects failure from this team when he plays against this team. Time to manage, emotional management. Right, right, that could come into play in a huge, huge way in this match. I like that they're consciously trying to foster character development in their teammate. That's great. Oh, it's... Pointy. Mr. Points, he who likes to point at people without words. I guess people aren't there to cheer on Kurosano because no one expects him to win. But it'd be cool to see their school start to turn out to support. And expectations play such a big role in it too. They expect that they tech to be beasts. Bam! Putting the team on his back. I think they're alright. I think they're gonna be alright. Yeah, I feel like Nish Nishinoya also is one of the characters who who notices people the best, if that makes sense. He's really paying attention to them. He knows his teammates. And it seems like he has genuine regard, not just for Asahi, who's probably his biggest source of inspiration among the group. But I feel it when he talks to Hinata as well. And I'm sure that extends to the rest of the team in some, some capacity. Oh no, we're not gonna get this match, are we, right now? It's a big episode coming up. A big couple episodes, probably. With lots of crush chatter in between points. Wow, that was a, a very impactful and touching episode for me. It's brutal, you know, it's it's brutal. I've said before why I think sports is just so important and special in that it captures kind of a, a dying part of life that is an essential part of life, which is, I still don't know exactly how to express it, but it has to do with the domain of life where you're engaged in a battle to win something that's highly coveted in which success is not only not guaranteed, but is at least to some degree, probably a large degree, a function of things that you have no control over. And you're doing your best with no guarantee of anything. And where there's danger. Sports is sort of a controlled, contained environment in which to explore these, but the things for, for which it is a model of contain the danger of like death, you know? There's something in it connected to the, just the raw cruelty that, that nature is capable of, that exists in the natural world, that in some sense we've kind of become disconnected from or forgotten due to just relative prosperity and growth. It's a hard thing to look at, but I really believe at the very core of my being that beyond initial pain of changing your worldview and updating it. The truth will always be something good and will always be something that ultimately frees you if you can accept it. So it's such a special episode because you immediately get it. You, know, you get the pain of their loss. It's the end of at least Daichi's friend's volleyball career, maybe the girl's volleyball career as well. And man, does that sting because it's something they really cared about and gave a lot of time to in their life. But at the same time, it's beautiful because you're watching them grow in real time. You're watching them understand new things in real time. And you also have the benefit of perspective knowing that as critical as it feels, as dramatic and fun as it is, it is is just a game and it does exist mostly as a model from which they can learn about life so that they can be successful people and have successful lives and this is not their last endeavor and in large part this endeavor and the endeavors that follow will not necessarily be about the outcome but about meeting themselves which i think is one of the highest rewards of life so with the benefit of hindsight years down the road when they've found other things they're passionate about and are hopefully crushing it at those things they will look back at volleyball and be happy with themselves and who they showed up as the people who will have long-term regret are going to be the people who made excuses to not do the things they actually probably wanted to do but were afraid to do or were unable to do because they preferred something a little easier, a little less convenient, and in some ways a little less truthful if that makes sense. I also think simultaneously it's sort of a preview of a threat that exists for our team. They have no guarantee of winning. They're amazing. They're all great people. One, they have some real weapons that people are, are starting to acknowledge. There's nothing that says they couldn't win, but the farther up the bracket they go, the more they're going to meet people like themselves. And there's also going to always be this kind of luck factor. You know, they might lose to a team 
that they would beat 9 out of 10 times. That's highly possible, but it's elimination, so. This episode was kind of s- s- more soft and sentimental. It wasn't this, you know, gung-ho, we're rising to victory, although there was some of that. It was more of the other side of it, the emotion, the pain of growth, if that makes sense. It's even possible, speaking of which, that the two people we saw lose learned more than Kurosano did in that match, because a lot of times growth and pain are highly correlated. I feel like this episode was really essential in kind of deepening or creating new new depths for the emotional range in this area of life. And it's especially exciting coming right before this huge battle, upcoming battle with literal giants, both on the court and in their minds.